Have you ever wondered if you're actually tightening your bolts the correct way? Whether you're using an old school torque wrench or just plain guessing, today I'm upgrading to a digital torque wrench and that makes precision simple. I'm gonna teach you how to use one like a pro and explain why getting the right torque isn't just important, it's absolutely essential. Hey everyone, welcome back to the AutoTech Garage. My name is Keith. Today we're talking torque wrenches. I've got in front of me a bunch of them here. I just recently bought a new set of these digital torque wrenches. And I kind of wanted to explain a little bit about uh, why I made this purchase, why I'm upgrading over some of my older tools here, and what some of my hesitation was, my, my reservations on why I haven't done this earlier. Um, before we do that, let's talk about the importance of using a torque wrench and what's the right time to use it. I've got next to me this engine over here. And this is probably the most critical time to be using your torque wrench. Anytime we're working on something that's uh, extremely delicate like this, the, the torque specs are absolutely critical in these components. If we're tightening down even these camshafts, bearings, cylinder head bolts, all those things absolutely have to be torqued. And there's always a procedure for that that should be followed as well. A certain sequence that you may have to tighten them in and also multiple steps in how you tighten them. So if we're working on a Subaru, for example, you might have to torque certain bolts to a certain foot pound rating or Newton meter. And then you have to do that in a certain sequence. And then some might be a little bit tighter than others. And then at the end, they might actually ask you to just twist them another 80 or 90 degrees each. And uh, it's really complicated. So you wanna make sure you've got the process down and you wanna make sure that you've got the correct tools to do that. In addition to the engine building side of it, anything internal on a transmission, always an excellent idea to use a torque wrench whenever possible. And building rear ends is another one. As a matter of fact, anytime you're tightening down any kind of a bearing anywhere, whether that be a wheel bearing, a hub bearing, pinion bearings, any of that stuff, it's really important that you get your torque wrench out and use it for those things. And then the last place that I really feel is kind of critical is tightening wheels up. We see this all the time. Some of these cars, and I think I've done some videos about it, uh, the torque spec is so low, it might be 75 or 76 foot pounds to tighten the wheel up on a car. And if you're using an impact wrench, that's capable of 150 foot pounds, you're double the torque on it and you're really just, you're doing a disservice to your car. You're gonna end up destroying your, your threads on your lug studs, your lug nuts. You're gonna over tighten the, the rotor hat on there and it's really gonna cause vibrations and things. So it's just important in these areas that you get your torque wrench out and uh, make sure you're using the specifications available so that we're tightening down to what the manufacturer wants. On the flip side, I think there's some common sense application to tightening bolts that should be used all the time. There's a lot of hardware on a car that you're gonna be tightening down and you certainly don't wanna break out the torque wrench and try to find a torque spec for every single bolt you touch. So obviously with experience, you get a great feel for how tight things should be. And if you're inexperienced, that makes it really tough. I can, it's not something I can give to you or you know I can just transpose to you. It takes a lot of years to develop your technique, to feel what, you know, what feels tight enough and not too tight and those types of things. So um, anything that involves uh, non-critical parts, you're usually fairly safe. If you're, if you're working on something that just has a, a few bolts around a water pump, it's not necessary really that you do that unless you're uncomfortable with your technique. So if you feel like you, you, you don't know if you got it tight enough or if you feel like you might be over tightening it, then you might have to get the torque wrench out. But these are bolts that I generally won't be using a torque wrench on, something like that. So anything critical, engine-wise, transmission-wise, bearing-wise, that's a go for the torque wrench. And then the rest of it, you're probably pretty safe. I know I've done some oil change videos and uh, you know people are saying you should be using a torque wrench to tighten up your oil filter. Guys, this is kind of difficult. If you've got, depending on what kind of oil filter you've got, you're gonna need a certain cup or cone that fits your exact filter to use with the torque wrench. Uh, a little common sense goes a long way. You know, we wanna tighten these things up until the O-ring seats. If you're using a the typical screw-on style oil filter, a spin-on style, Tighten it up till it seats, and then just you know tighten it up a little bit more. You know, a quarter turn or so is usually enough. So uh, use some common sense. I know you guys got plenty of it out there, and uh, don't be nervous. Most of these things you can kind of get a feel for. I've got some stuff laid out in front of me. I just wanted to show you a few options that you have if you're looking to buy a torque wrench. We've got some beam style torque wrenches like this that are fairly inexpensive sometimes, but generally one like this is fairly inexpensive. You could probably buy it from Amazon. And then you upgrade to maybe a click style torque wrench. And this one's gonna make a little popping sound once you reach your torque specification. And then you can get into one like I bought recently here, this digital style one. They'll all do the job. The most important part is that you buy something that's calibrated properly. You just wanna make sure that it's accurate. Uh, other than that, they're all gonna read exactly the same. There's, there's no problem with that. Some are a little bit easier to use. This little beam style one, 
Um, requires you a little bit of patience and be steady with your hand to get it accurately torqued down. Whereas the click type one doesn't really let you go too much further once the handle breaks. So it's, it's a little bit more foolproof. Once you get into one like this digital style here, um, I honestly feel like the click style torque wrench is a little more foolproof. It's kind of hard to get past the click and go tighter. You'd have to, you'd have to really not be paying attention to what you're doing. Whereas this one's got some lights on it. Uh, three different color lights. It's reading you the torque specification. It's all buzzing at the same time. It's got a lot going on for it. So I really feel like the click style is really just a, a nice happy medium if you're looking to buy one for yourself. Well guys, I forgot to break out Big Bertha. This is my three quarter inch drive torque wrench. Oh, <laughs> the like and subscribe button reminded me to remind you to honk that horn, smash that like button. This way you get notifications when we release new content. There is another way we use a torque wrench and that's to measure the torque angle. I touched on this briefly here when I was talking about tightening up cylinder head bolts. This is a common theme nowadays. A lot of bolts that are used to assemble engines are what they call torque to yield bolts, which means they're just basically stretching the bolt out in order to get the clamping force they want. In order to do that, they're asking you to tighten it to a certain angle. Now, if you're doing a 90 degree angle, that's pretty easy to, to kind of see. Um, not 100% accurate without some accurate tools, but at least you can get you in the ballpark. Sometimes they're doing 80 degrees on some of these things, or they might be doing 60 degrees. It's just not so obvious when you do that. So you need a device to use, and a standard torque wrench, this click style, won't do it for you. You know, this is not gonna give you torque angle. It's only giving you uh, a tightening specification in foot pounds or Newton meters or some other uh, measurement. Whereas I would have to use a tool like this. This is called a torque angle gauge. And this is used to precisely measure how many degrees you've turned the bolt. Now this tool has got some drawbacks to it. We can't uh, ratchet with it. And once you get started, you kind of need to do one consistent pull, nice and even. Now, if you've ever put any engines together, some of these head bolts are so tight. We've got to have somebody holding the engine on a stand. So nothing twists on it. And I got one foot up on the engine stand while I'm trying to twist this thing. It can be a cumbersome process. It's not, easy to get a torque angle done properly uh, without stopping sometimes. So um, this is really not uh, the best way either. And that's kind of why I've upgraded my assortment here to these digital torque wrenches. These have torque angle measurements in them that are very precise. It allows you to stop and start again and still measure exactly the torque angle that you need. And it also allows you to ratchet on these. So. I could come this way. Let's say I'm in a underneath the hood of a car and I'm trying to tighten something. I can go a little bit and then come back and go a little bit more and come back. I could do that three times if I wanted to, and it's still going to precisely measure the torque angle. And that's really the, the main reason for this. There is one, one more reason that I'm a little ashamed to talk about, and that's the fact that I'm losing my eyesight a bit here. So when I look at a torque wrench like this one, in order for me to set the torque reading on here, I've got to pull this collar back and then twist this so that the lines on this little graduated scale line up to the base of this handle. And with my eyesight the way it is right now, it's difficult for me to read that. So that's another thing that kind of prompted me here recently to upgrade my torque wrenches. Now, guys, these aren't cheap. You know, no matter which torque wrench you buy, none of them are really cheap. They have some cheaper models that you can get, you know, maybe the Craftsman range or even this, uh, you know, this brand over here, Performance Tool, I think you can get um, Amazon or something. But once you get into a style like this, you're easily $500 plus for one torque wrench. So they get quite costly. And make sure if you're going to buy something like this, you're, you're prepared to spend the investment, something you're going to use frequently. I want to talk about one of the other downsides of this digital torque wrench. And that's the fact that it takes batteries. You know, you've got a double, double A battery, it's got a slide in the handle. And if you're, you're only assembling something once in a while where you need this torque wrench, you're gonna have to take the batteries out. You don't wanna leave them in there. At some point, they're gonna leak acid and do some damage to your tool. And you don't wanna do that with all the money you've spent on it. So I guess that's, that's probably the main downside. We're gonna do a little demonstration here for you, but when you're tightening this thing up, it's got a lot going on. So it's just a little bit distracting. I, I think sometimes when you're using this tool, uh, with all the features going on. There's a couple of them you can turn off, obviously. So if that gets a bit much, it's, a, it's easy to change some of that in the settings. I'm excited to give you guys a little demonstration here of each one of these tools. I'm gonna show you this beam type in action, the click type, and then we'll get into the digital one and show you the torque angle measurement as well. I'm gonna start off with the simplest, most basic tool. This is the beam style. And I'll show you what this looks like on a small bolt. 
Now this is important here that you understand what measurements you're using. This is only gonna measure in inch pounds and Newton meters, okay? So if you're looking to do foot pounds, you'll need to do a conversion. If you don't understand how to do that, you can certainly search Google, there's calculators for that. Um, just make sure if you're talking foot pounds or inch pounds, they're gonna be a whole lot different and you wanna make sure you have the specs right. And leading into that as well, you wanna make sure that you have some accurate torque specifications for whatever bolts you're tight tightening. Uh, we're not, we can't just randomly guess at these things. It's, it's something that's extremely important that you have the factory information for that. So here we are on this engine. I'm just gonna show you on a small bolt with a 10 millimeter head. This is a six millimeter bolt. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like to get to 60 inch pounds. So you just wanna put the tool on here and you wanna make sure that it's on uh, the head of the bolt completely. And what I usually do is I'll set it on here and I'll put a little pressure on it here and then I'll grab right at the end. And th this is another important point, guys. Um, you always wanna use the handle exactly where the handle's at. Don't go too far past it or you know grabbing in the middle of your torque wrench or anything. You gotta be right at the handle. This one has a very small black ball as a handle. So um, I usually put a little pressure here, make sure I'm on the bolt correctly. It's not cockeyed. And then you're gonna grab your handle. Once you get a little bit of tension on here, it's pretty easy to, to have it stay on the bolt. And then I just wanna slowly move this until you get to your torque specification. I'm gonna to go to 60 right here. Okay, so now you see if I try to hold it at 60, it's hard because there's a lot of wiggling going on. I'm really deflecting this beam on here, you know, and it's got some spring tension on it. So. That's why I say these are a little bit harder to use. They take a little bit of precision, I guess, if you're trying to, to hold it in place. Um, but the measurement is extremely accurate, so you don't have to worry about that. So next, I wanna show you the click style torque wrench. So this is also a quarter inch drive head on it. That's the square drive we're gonna be using with the same 10 millimeter drive socket here. And uh, the only thing different here is we need to set the specification onto the tool. Now on here, there are some graduated marks that will tell you either foot pounds or Newton meters. And you need to rotate this barrel here. So the handle actually rotates. Once you pull this collar up and some other torque wrenches will be similar, but um, maybe just a, maybe pull it down instead of up. But we're going to pull this up. That's going to release the lock on it. We don't want this handle turning and adjusting the, the torque specification while we're tightening something. That's why these handles usually lock in place. So we're just going to go ahead and pull the collar up and then you can turn this until you get your measurements aligned. Now there's some lines that go horizontally and those are gonna be the larger increments and then there's some lines on the handle that are gonna go vertically and those are the smaller increments. So you'll need to, you need to calculate what you've got here, but if you're going between 70 and 80, let's say you want them and you want 75, you gotta set the vertical measurement at five on the straight line on the graph here on the, on the chart. And then you wanna make sure the base of the collar is sitting there at in between 70 and 80. So I've got this one set to 60 inch pounds. We've got our socket on there and I'll just show you the same technique. Uh, we're gonna put this on the head of the bolt. I wanna make sure I'm pushed down on here. And this way I can release the handle. And then I just wanna grab the handle here in, the, in this zone where the handle's at. If I'm over here, I'm not gonna be applying the right torque or if I'm way out on the end here, it's not usually good either. So try to get right where the handle is at and then just slowly apply some pressure until the head clicks. Right there. Okay, it's that simple. All right, now for the fun part. I wanna get into this digital torque wrench. So we're gonna do something here. This one is, I've, I've only got here in a half inch drive and a three eighths drive, no quarter inch. And the reason for that is these are extremely accurate and the, the torque range is very low on here. So it goes extremely low and I didn't see a real value in buying a quarter inch drive torque wrench when this one can do just about everything that I'll probably ever do with it. In the event, uh, it won't do that. I've always got my trusty snap-on quarter inch drive torque wrench there. So this one is going to operate a little bit differently. It's got a bunch of buttons on it here. We've got turn the power on and you can you can hear that thing fire up. It has a backlit display on it, a digital display with a ton of information on it. And it allows you to scroll through these settings to pick your choice of units. So we're set to foot pounds on here and I just wanted to demonstrate what it looks like to use this. We're going to go 20 foot pounds, something pretty light, and show you how this operates here. So if I come over to this bolt, 
Same thing, I just wanna put a little pressure on the head of that bolt and slowly apply a little bit of pressure to the handle. Same thing, I wanna use the, the handle range on here. And then we're just gonna apply our torque. And this thing is pretty cool because it's gonna give you some ideas what's going on as you go through this torque range until you get to your specification. It's starting off with some green light and you can see the torque specification is slowly moving up or I should say the torque that you're applying to it is slowly moving up. And then we're into a yellow range. That means we're getting close to our 20 foot pounds. And then once we hit it, we're red and the light is flashing and the handle is actually vibrating, which is kind of cool. So there might be a time when you can't actually see the display on here. You know, a lot of times we don't have an engine on a stand while we're working on it. It's in the car and you might be working on a van and you're, you know, you're buried inside this thing and you can't really see what you're doing so well just because the, the way the cylinder head's sitting or something along those lines. So having this thing vibrate is definitely a handy feature to let you know when you get to the torque specification. So for this next demonstration, I'll be showing you this uh, half inch drive torque wrench digital and I want to show you what the torque angle does. Now I set this to a very low torque angle. It's only seven degrees just for demonstration purposes, but I wanted to just show you uh, how it measures torque angle as well. So we're going to come over here and then we're just going to use the same process. I like to hold the head in place, make sure it doesn't slip off, especially if you've got a longer socket on here. It's possible you could be angled or something. And this is really critical, guys. You can't go back and redo angle after your tool has kind of slipped off. It's just not, it's not a feasible thing to do. Um, so just make sure you, you're staying on here and then we're just going to go ahead and apply that pressure slowly until we get to our seven degrees. The green light's on. We went yellow to red and we're at seven degrees. So really simple to use. And like I said, this tool is designed for you to ratchet it back and continue on. It's going to, it's going to continue to measure that torque angle without a problem. And then one other thing this tool is able to do is actually measure torque in reverse, which is kind of cool. So, you know, the recommendation has been for years not to use your torque wrench to loosen anything. You know, the, the, you could possibly ruin the calibration on it. And uh, it's always been this, I don't know, even know if it's a wives tale or not, but everybody's always said, never use your torque wrench in reverse, right? But this one, from what I've been told, and I couldn't find anything contrary in the instructions, allows you to actually use this in reverse. So if you had some left hand thread bolts, something that threads on the opposite direction and tightens counterclockwise, you would be able to check the torque on that. Or if you wanted to try to even uh, maybe measure how tight something was before it breaks loose, you could use it in that scenario as well. Another nice thing about these digital torque wrenches is they don't require you to unwind them before you store them away. Now they do require you to remove the batteries, we talked about that, but if you're using this click style torque wrench, you wanna take this thing and then you loosen it all the way up uh, so there's no tension on the spring or as little tension as possible. And this will keep your torque wrench calibrated for a much longer time and uh, keep, your, keep your spring in good shape. So make sure you're always winding your torque wrench down when you're done using it. I want to remind you guys that it's important to have your torque wrenches calibrated from time to time. So if you're going to buy it and, and let it sit in your toolbox for a few years, it's possible when you take it out to use it. If you haven't used it in that long period of time, that especially if you haven't stored it properly by unwinding your spring, it's possible your calibration is off and that doesn't do you any good either. So... I think the general recommendation is to have your torque wrench calibrated every year. I know sometimes that's not possible. And listen, I've been doing this a long time and you know, I always double check my torque wrenches, especially if I haven't used it for a little bit against somebody else's uh, that I know to be good. Also the number of cycles that you go through on your torque wrench has a lot to do with when you need to calibrate it. So again, high use, more frequent calibration than uh, low use, you know, maybe more on a time-based thing. The last thing I wanted to mention here is that doesn't really matter what brand of torque wrench you, you buy. I told you we've got a few different brands on here. These are, these are Cornwell, I've got Matco, I've got Snap-on, and I've got this uh, Precision Tool. Um, it doesn't really matter all that much. If you might be wondering why I bought these in particular, um, I like the look of them. So, you know, that was, that was probably number one. And then my Cornwell tool dealer was, uh, he had some kind of promotion on these. I think they were, you know, 50 bucks off each one or something like that. So, you know, I saved a hundred bucks on the set. So if there, anything prompted me on that one, that's probably it. Uh, otherwise there's lots of great choices out there. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies and I'm not recommending any of these tools in particular as far as brands go. So just get yourself something that's quality and make sure you store it properly. Make sure you take good care of you're cleaning it down and putting it back in its case before you store it away. And you guys should be in great shape. I hope this information has been valuable to you. I hope you learned a little bit. You've got the proper process for using your torque wrench. You've got some ideas of what you could buy if you're gonna buy one. And we really appreciate you guys following along in this content. 
Uh, we love bringing this type of stuff to you. Hopefully something you haven't seen before. Make sure you check out this next video we got over here. We really appreciate you following along with us and we'll see you in the next one.